You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. A new year means it's time for a new home network that can keep up. With Cox Internet, you have the speed and coverage your family needs to stay connected. You'll enjoy Cox's fiber-based hybrid network with options for fast upload and download speeds. And if your household has lots of connected devices, panoramic Wi-Fi may be the perfect fit thanks to its additional control features. Plus, with advanced security on panoramic Wi-Fi, you'll know each connected device is securely protected 24-7. A whole world of connectivity is yours with Cox Internet. Learn more at Cox.com. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, 
dollars, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Since I forgot we're going to do this on the fly, listener discretion is advised. Foul language and me being a cranky is coming right at you. Also, I've been calling asshole about 42 times today, so I might be a little more mad than usual. Right. Welcome into the program, ladies and gentlemen. Something feels off in my ears. One moment, please. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm feeling sounding sounding a little more normal now, as normal as I sound anyway. All right, anyway, so we're here, we're live, or I should say, I'm here, I'm live. It's whatever, but I am Stacy Liz because she's off enjoying fall and Oktoberfest like a one percenter, and I'm here still working because I'm trying to become a one percenter. <laughs> Anyway, oh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Can, 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 can you even become a one percenter anymore? I feel like they've got the game stack so far against you. Anyway, that, that, that's an entirely different show. All right, so hope everybody's having a great Thursday. Almost a Tuesday again. We did this show for on Tuesdays for forever. And now it's Thursdays, and that always throws me off. Anyway, so coming up after this, we should have the culture shift with Brad and almost said Aggie <laughs> with Brad and Amish, and then. Uh, God willing, there will be a generic show tonight at 10 Eastern. Uh, we've been misconnecting on that one the last few weeks, so there hasn't been one for a bit. Um, since I'm doing a, anywhere between 75 to 90 minutes of this one, I don't know if I will have the gumption to do another solo later. Uh, then again, we were supposed to have a guest, so I may see if nothing else, if he still wants to come on um, and maybe do it anyway. But we shall see. I still haven't heard from Jen, so we'll play everything by ear. Kind of like we always do, because, you know, when most everybody that you work with is doing it as a hobby, you can't really yell at them when they're like, I have life stuff. I'm like, but we're trying to build a business. And they're like, yeah, but it's it's yours. <laughs> so I can't really be mad. Anyway. Um, I can't be mad about other things though. Although I don't know, I don't know if you guys have heard. Um, you you may not have, but but um, hang on, let me see if I can find it. I have so many different instances of Twitter open for all the other stuff that I do. But uh, in case you missed it, Nancy Pelosi agreed that there was you know an assault on our democracy yesterday. Uh, let's let you hear it. When we've had a. a uh... A speaker's race on our side or their side, we've always respected each other's judgment. But today and yesterday, that that was an assault on our democracy as Jim Jordan assaulted our democracy on January 6th. And as uh, Rashida Tlaib and her her ilk assaulted our democracy on October 18th, I mean, come on, guys. I am so sick of the double standards in this country. We didn't change the rules of what an insurrection is. You did. This fits the criteria that you placed against every J6 participant as an insurrection. If anything, what happened at the Capitol yesterday was more violent than what happened on January 6th. But nobody's talking about it because we can't. Because we don't want to offend the terrorists, Rick. We're afraid they're going to go cut our heads off in our sleep. You know what? Let them try. I have had it. I have had it. 
Our government is being held hostage by anarchists, and we have terrorists protesting on our streets, and nobody's doing anything about it. And yes, I said what I said. I've been trying to tell everybody from the day that Matt Gates pulled the pin on that grenade that when this blew up in his face, it needed to be pointed right back at him. We have had a rudderless leadership in Congress for two weeks. We can't do anything. Because nobody can agree on who the best speaker is. Because we have eight Republicans and all of the the Democrats who came together and said, hey, you know what? Maybe McCarthy wasn't the best choice. And you've got that one vote threshold. Why don't you go ahead and pull that pin? And then nobody decided how we were going to get past that point. Here's my problem with all of it. And I've been trying to lay this out for weeks. And everyone wants to come at me sideways every time that I do. This is what we now know. And we know this because McCarthy basically said it on his way out the door. But nobody's talking about it. He, it, it was a little 15-second clip during his presser right after he got voted out. And he basically said the same people that, are t- that, that did this to me today are the same people that made it to where I couldn't get anything done the entire time I was trying to be speaker. So, yes, I found other ways to get things done because I was being blocked at every turn. Because I came to D.C. to do my job, nobody was letting me do my job. So again, this is what I'm trying to point out. The only reason McCarthy was able to get the speakership was because Matt Gates put this stupid one-vote rule in place and said the second you cross a line that we don't feel like you should have, we have the authority to call for a one-vote. Now, of course, it will still take a majority vote to get you out. And so McCarthy went to Pelosi and said, hey... This is what they're putting on me, and I feel like I, I don't really know what to do. So, you know, he went to somebody that had been speaker before. That was probably his second mistake. His first mistake was ever trust, trusting Matt Gates to begin with. His second mistake was trusting Nancy Pelosi. And she's like, don't worry about it. If it ever comes to that, I've got your back. And then it came to that, and she didn't have his back. Everybody wants to know why she was thrown out and why it was the speaker pro tem that did it. it the speaker pro tem did it because he got told to. Because she was allowed to keep her nice digs because she was supposed to have McCarthy's back. And when she didn't, he said, fuck you, game, game, you're out. Here's my problem again with all of this. McCarthy kept calling to try to start getting things done. The same people that threw him under the bus blocked him every step of the way until we got to the point where it had to be done. Because they just assumed everyone was going to cave again. McCarthy didn't actually cave, not in the way that you think. He may have had to do some things that we didn't like, but here's the the other thing that I keep trying to make everybody understand. We have a five-seat majority in the House. We cannot keep trying to govern as if we have a supermajority and control of the executive branch when we don't. These eight people, over and now 20-some-odd people, over and over again, keep basically, I'm taking my ball and going home because I'm not getting the things that I want. We are being held hostage by a tyranny of the minority. If you want to blame the 20-some-odd people that that are not voting for McCarthy now, you know what? I get that. They deserve all the blame for where we are at this moment. But they didn't create this mess. Matt Gates did. Because McCarthy tried to do the job he was sent in to do. And he tried to get things done the right way. And the only way that he could ever get anything done was to start acquiescing to the other side. That's called a compromise. That didn't actually used to be a bad word in D.C. I don't know when it became one. Because when I first started doing this, that's all we kept saying we wanted was people that were willing to reach across the aisle and try to get shit done. Now they do it and they're ostracized, vilified, and kicked out. Now, I get it. The other side is lockstep, and you feel like when you start giving in to them that you're going to have to give in more and more and more and more. But at the same time, dude, this is almost November. There's an election like less, a little over a year away. That entire body is going to be voted on again. <coughs> this is not the time for that fight. They've already barely been able to accomplish anything because anytime McCarthy tried to do anything, everybody said, eh, no, let's focus on this instead. That's not how it works. When you appoint someone as the Speaker of the House, they're supposed to have the deciding vote. It doesn't matter whether you like the guy or not. The simple fact of the matter is, over 90% of the caucus was behind him when you stabbed him in the back. And the scariest thing for me, if I was McCarthy, the thing that I would be the most pissed off about is almost everybody that is coming at him sideways is only in there, in Congress in the first place, because he helped them get there. 
Now, again, was I happy about the Ukraine funding? No, not really. We can't afford it. But as you can see, it's still happening anyway. The president tonight is supposed to be giving his first primetime address in forever and going to be talking about money that he wants to send to both Palestine and Ukraine. Funny how we were supposed to be trying to stop that, and now it's still happening anyway. Do you guys get it yet? Do you understand that we aren't the ones in charge anymore? Do you understand that until we actually go in and clean it up, nothing's going to change? But you can't do it like this. Because if, if, if I say we, I don't even know why I keep saying we. I'm not a registered Republican. I'm simply a conservative. But if the GOP doesn't come together and get their shit straight, we're not going to have a majority anywhere. Probably ever again, because this is probably going to be one of the last times there may actually be an election that could actually happen. And I hate saying that, too, just for the record. Because I've heard that ever since I went, probably since the first time I voted. This is the election that's pivotal to saving America. Everyone needs to do their part. I've heard that since I was 18. I'm now 50. It's been heard so often and said so often that we don't really pay attention to it anymore. But the scariest part is every election it gets to be a little more accurate. And ladies and gentlemen, the, the thing that scares me the most, and I'm, I'm just uh, here before I do this. There. The thing that scares me the most is with as often as they were trying to project the idea of Donald Trump basically declaring martial law and suspending elections rather than turning over power. Why do you think they were so concerned he was going to do that? Because it's what they would do in his place. I mean, everybody wants to talk about J6 being an insurrection. If Donald Trump really wanted to lead an insurrection, it wouldn't have been that hard. I mean, come on. I mean, hell, like I said, what happened yesterday was more of an insurrection than what happened in January 6th. I mean, hell, um, was it, wasn't it, I, th I believe it was Rashida Tlaib who took the microphone and was like, did they really expect us to sit here quietly and do nothing? All the J6ers ever got told was go patriotically and peacefully and let your voice be heard. That's the difference, though. We've heard since 2016 the left calling for violence against Trump and against Trump's supporters. Now we're hearing the left calling for violence against Jewish people and Jewish supporters. And the scariest thing, the scariest thing is seeing all of the Jewish leftists that agree with them. There is a cancer in this country and it's progressivism. And this again is something that I never thought I would say. When I started naive, naively, when I started doing this all the way back in 2009, and I'll, you can go find the archives. It's a show. It was I mean, it actually really kind of started as kind of a, a farcical thing. It was called Wobbles and Nubs Present My Two Cents, and it's because each of the co-hosts had an issue. The guy who was the left-leaning guy only had one hand, and I have a, I have a limp. Everybody jokingly started calling me Wobbles, and then eventually it became Rowdy because, I, I don't know, maybe I got pissed off about being called Wobbles and started kind of busting heads. <laughs> but so, you know, because we started trying to do it, kind of having a little bit more fun with it, it started as that. And I used to open and close the show pretty much the same way. There are seven, to, uh, seven or eight hot-button issues that people are never going to agree on. So if we can put those aside and come together on the things that we do agree on, we would probably find that we have more in common with the politi with ourselves and each other than we do with the politicians. The problem is, that was a very naive view. And that was, like I said, 2009, I believe. Maybe 2010. I, I, th I think the podcast actually started originally in 2010. Um, but I, cause I'd been doing Facebook stuff from like 2008 until 2010. So we're talking what, 13 going on 14 years. And 
And in those 14 years, everything has changed. Everything has been turned on its head. When I first started doing this, everybody kept saying, we just want people that are willing to work together and put the country first. That's not true anymore. Now we want what we want, when we want it, we want it now, and if we don't get it, we're taking our ball and going home. And that's both sides. This country is going to tear itself apart. But here's the thing that, that I can't, uh, the, the other kind of, you know, a, as my view has, has changed regarding how this country actually works, here's something else that I've never been able to make anybody understand. Do you think that the people that have made it into the 1% club, when, I mean, let, let's just dumb it down for a second. Not, not for you guys, but just because it's easier for me to explain this way. Do you honestly think that if a white millionaire and a black millionaire meet, that they're talking about racial inequality? I doubt it. Do you honestly think that if a male millionaire and a female millionaire meet, they're talking about the patriarchy and how it's ruining our society? I doubt it. They want us fighting each other. That's why I'm so pissed off about the Matt Gates situation. That's what this is. It, that is him being a useful tool to get us fighting with each other again. So we're not, or so we wouldn't notice all the stuff that has stopped. Do you do you realize how close we were to starting an actual impeachment? I mean, we we, we actually started an inquiry. We were finally starting to look into Joe Biden. Now we're not. While we've been fighting over the speakership. A lot of Hunter Biden's charges have been quietly going away. Because we're fighting with each other again. While we've been fighting with over the speakership, now we're at war in three places. Here, with each other, and proxy wars in Europe and Israel. While, while we've been fighting with each other over the speakership, we now have proxy states from Iran that are now taking pot shots at joint bases with our people in them 37 Americans are either confirmed dead missing or both at last count I remember when we had a president in the White House who said if your bullshit kills one American I'm killing you I miss that because Iran tried him because he said this, uh, th this is my line in the sand if your bullshit kills one American, I'm retaliating. Their bullshit killed an American? I think it was actually quite a few, if I remember. Um, and <laughs> so we retaliated and took out Soleimani. Israel started trying to say it was saber rattle again. It's like, apparently you're not getting my memo, so let me make this really clear. I have 52 separate targets now set and ready to go. In honor of the number of hostages. So try me again. These people do not understand appeasement. These people do not understand weakness. The problem is that is all we project right now. Everywhere. At home and abroad. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm just as pissed off at McCarthy. McCarthy should have started busting heads. We, we, have, we need, I mean, dude, seriously, if you are going to be the person that is one of the, you're, you're like the number three person in charge of the free world, motherfucker, learn to bust some heads. Don't, don't just sit there and take it. That's the other thing that pisses me off. Matt Gates ran to a microphone week in, week out. See, I told you guys he was the wrong one. Nothing's getting done. And McCarthy just kept trying to deal with it internally like a gentleman. No, fuck that. If he's going to be putting cards on the table, by God, you should be too. Because then everybody gets to see it. I'm sick of this. Our entire country is paralyzed because we're fighting with each other over who the best speaker is. Because it's an all or nothing, zero sum equation with us anymore. There cannot be any give. None. That works when you're dealing with terrorists, and that's exactly how we should be dealing with terrorists. But that is not how you deal with Congress. 
If you want an all or nothing zero sum game, then you send enough people to Congress and to the government that hold your positions to make sure that it can be a zero sum game. That did not happen this last election cycle. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for shutting down the government. But not right now. Because we are one Joe Biden fucking droopy dog boomhauer moment away from nuclear war. And that's where we are. But sure, let, let's keep fighting. Well, McCarthy's not conservative enough. Then what the fuck's your problem with Jordan? Well, Jordan won't admit that Trump lost the election. Because we don't honestly know if he did! We know the results. But again, we're fighting over shit that we've known about since before I started doing this. Cheating in this country is not a bug, it's a feature. It has been. Look at history. Ballots, ballots, (laughs) ballot box stuffing happened all the time. Cheating is a feature, not a bug. So until we finally decide we've had enough and do something to fix it, bitching about it isn't doing anything anymore. We can keep saying we want everything in Congress the way it should be. Well, there's not enough people there to make sure that happens. Maybe, you know, more people should vote for what you're screaming that you want. That is the other thing that drives me crazy. Look, guys, I get it. Social media is a useful tool. It is part of why I do what I do and why I write stories and why I work for these different websites and why why I run this network. It gives me the ability to amplify my voice. So I get that it is a useful tool, but it is also not reality. All of you keyboard warriors sitting on Twitter and Facebook talking about, oh my God, Matt Gates is evil of the Republic because he's exposing these 22 plus now two more squish rhinos. I'm so sick of hearing rhino because you say that as soon as somebody says one thing that you don't agree with. Look, this was not the time for this fight. There was an election in less than a, year, a little over a year. The entire board could have been changed if we would have just come together and done what we told America we were going to do, which was start slowing down the spending. Now, I get it. He, but he's making backroom deals, Rick, and he's doing this and he's doing that. He had to. The dude, The dude was fucked no matter what. As soon as those eight people came together with all the Democrats and started putting and put, basically, yeah, we're not doing that right now. Nah, we'll, we'll do that. That can wait till later. And then, so because McCarthy's frustrated and can't get anything done, he goes ahead and says everybody can have the summer recess. So then that case runs to the microphone. Oh my God, McCarthy, let us just go for the summer recess. Well, we haven't done anything. You're the reason we haven't done anything, motherfucker. But that's the part I can't make anybody understand. Over and over and over again, I've had this conversation in person, over the phone, via text message, through social media. Oh my God, Matt Gates is the best thing since sliced bread. Matt Gates is the reason we're in the mess we're in right now. Well, it's not his fault these 22 people won't vote for McCarthy. No, but it was his fault that, that we have to, or for, I'm um, sorry, for Jordan. But yeah, no, it, but it is his fault that we were in this position in the first place in one of the worst possible times to be in this position. You guys don't understand it. Showing, well, when I say you guys, please understand I'm not talking about my regular listeners. But most of America doesn't seem to understand that showing weakness of any kind only emboldens the people that we're currently fighting. We keep trying to ascribe the same mores to these people that we have, and it cannot be done. It is a fallacy to try. The same is true with Russia. That's why we keep winding up in this mess over and over and over again. Russia is about to be extinct. 
They are literally fighting for their lives right now. Because they don't have they they don't have enough people to maintain their army. They don't have enough people to maintain their businesses. Their population is on a decline and they know it. This is why they're doing what they're doing on its face. And I'll explain why I said oh, on its face in a moment. Then you have Ukraine, who starts making noise about wanting to join NATO. The problem is, we already told Russia that nobody that has a border with them would ever be allowed to join NATO. But all of a sudden, everybody's like, yeah, it'll be all right. No, it wasn't. But here's the thing. Again, before I go back to explaining the first part, here's the thing that, again, I can't seem to make anybody understand. The only reason Russia pulled further into Ukraine is because of us. As soon as Biden started torching all the oil deals, Russia felt like it didn't have a choice. Now, Russia was already feeling like it didn't have a choice because, again, their population's in decline. So now there are two reasons why they're doing this. Now, I just, just, just to put this, not to put too fine a point on it, but if there was a country that was making power moves that was going to lead to our extinction, do you really think that we wouldn't be trying to do something about it? I know we always try to be and try to see ourselves as, but we're not always the good guys in these stories. We made a lot of this mess. Because we, we, because we had this crazy idea. We're a bunch of crazy kooky kids who thought, well, if we bring Western values into these places, they'll find out how much better it is. Except that's not how they view the world. We've made a lot of the mess that we're currently looking at. Unfortunately, having mumble mouth Biden in office has made all of the mess a thousand times worse. All right. Since it's just me, we're going to take more than one break. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hope everybody's enjoying the show so far. Sorry, there's no Stacy. She'll be back next week. We'll be right back. You're listening to whatever without Stacy live right here on KLR Radio. Be right back. To be whatever I, whatever I choose, and I'll sing the blues if I want. I'm free to say whatever I, whatever I like. If it's wrong or right, it's alright. Always seems to me you only see what people want you to see. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you.
We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. A new year means it's time for a new home network that can keep up. With Cox Internet, you have the speed and coverage your family needs to stay connected. You'll enjoy Cox's fiber-based hybrid network with options for fast upload and download speeds. And if your household has lots of connected devices, panoramic Wi-Fi may be the perfect fit thanks to its additional control features. Plus, with advanced security on panoramic Wi-Fi, you'll know each connected device is securely protected 24-7. A whole world of connectivity is yours with Cox Internet. Learn more at Cox.com. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities at participating McDonald's. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now, 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810.
And welcome back into the program, ladies and gentlemen. Again, you're listening to the Whatever Show live right here on KLR and Radio. Where usually it's just it's today is just me, Rick. But usually it's Rick and Stacy. But Stacy's off, you know, enjoying Oktoberfest and stuff. Kind of jealous, just saying. Anyway, so in no shortage of news, this just in. Well, actually, I say this just in. This is actually from a few hours ago. So they were toying with an idea, right? That, that got floated today, and even uh, Jordan got behind it, of basically empowering McHenry as a temporary speaker, and they were looking at doing it through maybe or until January, just so the House could get back to business because they seem to be at an impasse because nobody likes anybody that they put up. So, of course, Matt Gates takes to the microphone, like he always does, Per NBC News, Rep. Matt Gates says he will do everything possible to stop empowering McHenry as a temporary speaker, calling it a constitutional desecration not to elect a permanent speaker. So the second half of that sentence I actually agree with because I think it's a really stupid idea to give anybody in D.C. any more power even if it's supposedly only temporary because there's no such thing as temporary power in D.C., but what drove me nuts is all the people that flocked to this thread to start praising Matt Gates. So you know I had to say something. This was me four hours ago. You're praising the guy who got us here. The person who I was responding to, well, who shall remain nameless, came back with this pithy little tale. You understand nothing. Perhaps you like going along with the status quo, uniparty BS, but the rest of us are sick of it and have the courage to battle the beast. You clearly don't, so just sit there and take the lumps you're given. It's you. It's Y-O-U-R-E with an apostrophe after the U, by the way. Uh, by the regime, and no, you have relinquished your ability to genuinely complain. First of all, I have a First Amendment right to complain, bitch. Second of all, shut your pile. What are you, like 12? I've been doing this since two, was this before Obama was elected. That was a long ass time ago. I don't even know how old you are, but from looks at your picture, you can't, you ba you're barely voting age. So I don't even know where you come across trying to tell me that I have no right to complain. I have been complaining against railing, or complaining about railing against and filing against this machine since longer than you've been alive. So don't come at me and tell me I don't have the right to complain. My problem with all of this is, again, you people are so enamored with the cult of personality that you can't figure out this guy made this mess in the first place to elevate himself. And then he fell on the sword and was like, well, I don't actually want to be speaker. I just think we need a better one. So that elevated him even more in you guys' eyes. This guy is literally slimier than a Bond villain, and nobody but me seems to be able to see it, and it's really starting to piss me off. <sighs> okay, I feel marginally better now. I did say marginally, so be prepared. <laughs> I just, I can't with these people anymore. I can't. I mean, look, it's 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 the same with the diehard Trump people anymore. Look, he was an awesome president. I will never take anything away from that man from basically 2017 until really early 2020. But in 2020, shit went sideways. And he has a lot to answer for. And he's refusing to answer for it. That's my problem with him. Now, before anybody starts coming at me sideways, if he's the one that wins the nomination, I will be pulling the lever for Donald Trump. I don't have a say in the primary vote because I live in a closed primary state and I'm a registered libertarian. Libertarians don't even have primaries. And I sure as fuck am not going to be voting for somebody who's probably on the same side as Rashida Tlaib when it comes to terrorism. So fuck all that. So I will, if he gets the nomination, be voting for Donald J. Trump. And I've seen the way the left has come after him from the day he stepped off the escalator. Do I think that he's getting a raw deal? Yes. 
Do I think that it's a bunch of people who actually understand how our system works and knows that he hasn't really done much of anything wrong, but because they can vilify him and win in the court of public opinion, they're going to take him apart until there's nothing left? Yes, I also agree. I also think that is a true statement as well. Because most of the people that are coming after him right now have worked the system the same way he has and done everything that he's now being accused of doing. But but it's wrong because he did it. It's no different than Rashida Tlaib and all these people coming out now and saying, you can't call what happened on October 18th an insurrection because it was actually a peaceful protest and it was civilly done and responsibly done and that's how it should have been. <sighs> Apparently you either weren't there... Or you didn't see the same shit that I saw. I mean, they were assaulting police officers. I, just, I mean, come on. J, J, J6 started completely peacefully. There is now confirmed radio traffic stating that the, car, the crowd started becoming agitated because somebody gave an order to start firing less than lethal rounds into the crowd. That's when things went sideways. And I guarantee you, if the people that had, that had been that had gathered at Capitol yesterday had received the same treatment, it would have been a million times worse, and they know it. The other thing that I, that I found rather laughable today, and I'm stealing a bit of Jesse, Jesse Kelly's thunder right now, but I don't care, um, <clears throat> is the fact that we have all of these mainstream media types and all of these, you know, the same people that in 2016 were offering safe spaces to college kids who couldn't cope with Trump being elected that are now watching these rabid fascist fucking hate-mongering little pups <laughs> running all over the place screaming, uh, you know, Israel will be free or Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. Um, what, what is the other one they like to say? I always want to say empanada and I don't <laughs> I know that's not what they're saying, but I'm a fat guy. So don't 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 judge me if when they say infit I think it's infitata, which I think is their word for revolution. But I'm a fat guy, so every time they start saying infitata I, I hear impanata. Once I actually thought they said frittata and I was like, wait, really? Anyway, sorry. Fat jokes I got a million of them because I'm a fat kid. Anyway. But yeah, so so that happened too. Hang on, I'm, I'm looking for something else and I lost it. So the only good bad thing about being as active on social media now is it used to be really easy for me to find the, the things that I was kind of setting aside that I wanted to talk about because I could just scroll through my feed and be like, oh yeah, there it is. But yeah, now that I'm working social media all the time. Not as easy as it used to be. All right, so this is another point that I made today. Um, hang on. Let me get it opened. This is the other, one of the other really big points that, that I've kind of touched on a little bit in the show, but I'm still going to go full on, you know, headlong into it now. For those of you who don't understand exactly what's going on when you have Hamas putting out stories about Israel bombing hospitals and dead children and all these things. Let me let me break it down for you. First of all, they're lying. We know they're lying. Because Israel shows more restraint in war than even we do. And that's saying something. But there's a reason they do these things. Because they know, they know that the West has compassion. We advertise it everywhere. For them, compassion is weakness, though. So they use our compassion as a weapon, both in theater and heavily in the media. But since they view our compassion as weakness, when you sent for them, it's not accomplishing what you think it is. It's not winning hearts. It's not changing minds. It's reinforcing that they think that you're weak and deserve to die. And spurring them on. And this happens in both the theaters that we're currently in. Because 
the Eastern Hemisphere is not the same as the Western Hemisphere, folks. It's just not. Life was hard there for a long time. And it was literally survival of the fittest. That has changed for us because we said, well, you know, they need help. So we're going to go back and we're going to help them. All I'm going to say about that is that's not how they view things. I'm one of those people that needed help more than once to still be here. So I'm not decrying Western compassion. But I am saying that we've taken it way too far. Because we are trying to ascribe the same mores and the same thought processes and the same way of viewing the world that we have to people that see the world completely differently than we do. And this is not like different strokes, folks. We are never going to be able to get on the same page with these people because they think we are infidel. And for everyone who tries to convince you that Islam is a religion of peace, they're lying to you. I say this having worked with people that follow Islam. They're lying to you. Because it is useful for them to lie to you. Now, I'm not saying that <clears throat> maybe Muslim Americans, you know, the, the ones that I've had, you know, maybe converted from Christianity, Judaism, but we're living here. I have a feeling they're a lot like the Jewish Americans are here. So I don't think they've bought into all the hype. But the ones that we're importing... <laughs> We're in trouble. We're in trouble. It really is just that simple. We are in trouble. And nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to admit it. And yet, here we are. Still in trouble. Oh, in case you missed it, it's time to dust off your Day of Rage outfit again. Apparently... Now Hamas is calling for a day of rage on Friday. However, the last time Hamas called for a day of rage, it didn't go over very well. So, which was last Friday when pretty much nothing happened. Now, when when the bigger group called for it on Wednesday, that's when the fun started. But the thing about it is, the more they call for these days of rage, the more stirred up everybody's going to get. And this is what pisses me off, because the media biting on this story about the hospital that we now know is completely fabricated, other than the fact that a misfired rocket from the terrorists fell into a parking lot and injured however many people were in the parking lot, but it damn sure wasn't 500. But they ran with it. They ran with it because it fit their narrative. Because we have now elevated people to the status of relative fame that hate us. They hate us. It's time to stop supporting them. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to say this from the moment I started doing this. It is time to stop supporting the media outlets that hate you. There are so many different ways for you to get your, your news now. You get it from people like me. I mean, you realize how many people there are like me that do this day in, day out, and try to bring you news that 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 not only fits into your perspective, but in a way that you can understand it. There are so many of us that are trying to do it because we know that the media hates us. We know that the media cannot stand that they can't be the gatekeepers anymore. That's what that was really about. Because now that the media got caught disseminating all this disinformation, now they're coming out and talking about how quickly the disinformation got amplified on social media. Because now they're trying to make social media the bad guy again. Even though it was them pushing the narrative that sparked the fire in the first place. Because it's never about them. 
ladies and gentlemen, we have been an abusive in an abusive relationship with the media since the nineteen nineties. We just refuse to admit it. We've been an abusive been been in an abusive relationship with our government since about the same time. We just refuse to admit it. And I know some of you have been on the planet longer than me. You're like, dude, this was like seventies. Maybe. I barely remember the 70s, so I'm going with the 90s. Leave me alone. Don't judge me. Because <laughs> I remember the 90s was when everything started seeming like it started turning on its head. And it's been a slow, gradual decline ever since. Because fun times. Why the hell not, right? <sighs> oh, did I mention that you know, Joe Biden's going to be on TV tonight? So luckily I'll be off air during the time frame that he's on. So I'll I'll take one for the team, damn it. Anyway. I don't I don't Can we can while well, but you know there's a closing for the first hour and we have about another thirty minutes left when well, a little less than thirty when we come back from the break. Um can we deport the squad yet? <laughs> Oh, Congresswoman Cori Bush on Twitter as of 3.58 p.m. Central today, which would, which is God's country. So, and it's just, it's just me. I'm not converting. Y'all can suck it. Um, <laughs> what we're not going to do is call yesterday's courageous and nonviolent anti-war pro-peace demonstrations an insurrection. This was good trouble. Civil disobedience. And let's be clear, January 6th was not civil disobedience. It was an insurrection. Okay, Jen. Um, now, th this is the part that I like. As a politivist in Congress, I know the power of civil disobedience. What the fuck is a politivist? Civil disobedience has been used throughout history to fight back against oppression violence and injustice it's been used to protest the vietnam war south africa and apartheid jim crow police brutality and more civil disobedience is often undermined and criminalized in attempts to preserve the status quo you mean kind of like you did for january 6th for example nelson mandela was on the u.s terrorist watch list until 2008 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was actively targeted by the FBI. Um, you realize these are the people that you, you're you one of now, right? Just kind of throwing that out there. <laughs> it's no surprise the far-right extremists are trying to criminalize and silence dissent. But we must reject these harmful attempts. The right to participate in civil disobedience is fundamental to our democracy and freedom of speech and assembly are protected under the First Amendment. I am sending love to our siblings in St. Louis, Washington, D.C. and across the world getting into good trouble pushing for a ceasefire now. And of course, ceasefire now was a hashtag. Know this, Congress, know this, or I'm sorry, know this Congresswoman loves you and I will do everything in my power to protect your right to dissent. Solidarity forever. And I'm disappointed there wasn't more of a ratio on that. Although, there is a frog of shame on it. And at last count, it's kicking the entire thread's ass. Almost. The first tweet is over 4,000. The frog of shame is currently sitting at 2,000. Um, he probably should have dropped it a little further up there. But I don't know if it would have let him... Anyway, if you guys have not seen The Frog of Shame, you should go check out this thread. It's amazing. I actually am working on a tweet of my own, um, specifically for <laughs> Hamas sympathizers. Hey, it's it's called Bacon Bits, the, the, the Pig of Shame. Uh, I haven't been able to make mine as pretty as his yet, though, so I'm still working on it. Anyway, we're going to take a break. We'll be back. we still got about 30 minutes left until the culture shift starts, so stay tuned. I'm Rick Robinson. You're listening to us live right here on KLRNRadio.com. This is the Whatever Show, usually with Rick and Stacy, but tonight I'm stacy -less. We'll be right back. Need to be whatever I, whatever I choose and I'll 
You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? What are you doing now? I'm no Vanderbilt. This train makes hay. No, earlier this morning I returned from Israel. They tell me I'm the first American president to travel there during the war. I met with the prime minister and members of his cabinet. And most movingly, I met with Israelis who had personally lived through horrific horror of the attack by Hamas on the 7th of October. More than 1,300 people... Sorry about that, Israel, ladies and gentlemen. We're preempting the break because I realized it just started. So you're going to have to listen to it with me. Ha <laughs> ha! From infants to the elderly grandparents. Israelis, Americans taken hostage. As I told the families of Americans being held captive by Hamas, we're pursuing every avenue to bring their loved ones home. As president, there is no higher priority for me than the safety of Americans held hostage. The terrorist group Hamas unleashed pure, unadulterated evil in the world. But sadly, the Jewish people know perhaps better than anyone that there is no limit to the depravity of people when they want to inflict pain on others. <clears throat> in Israel, I saw people who are strong, determined, resilient, and also angry, in shock, and in deep, deep pain. I also spoke with President Abbas, the Palestinian Authority, and reiterated the United States remains committed to the Palestinian people's right to dignity and to self-determination. The actions of Hamas terrorists don't take that right away. Like so many other, I'm heartbroken by the tragic loss of Palestinian life, including the explosion at the hospital in Gaza, which was not done by the Israelis. We mourn every innocent life lost. We can't ignore the humanity of innocent Palestinians who only want to live in peace and have an opportunity. You know, the assault on Israel echoes nearly 20 months of war, tragedy, and brutality inflicted on the people of Ukraine, people that were very badly hurt since Putin launched his all-out invasion. We've not forgotten the mass graves, the bodies found bearing signs of torture, rape used as a weapon by the Russians and thousands and thousands of Ukrainian children forcibly taken into Russia, stolen from their parents. It's sick. Hamas and Putin represent different threats, but they share this in common. They both want to completely annihilate a neighboring democracy, completely annihilate it. Hamas' stated purpose for existing is the destruction of the state of Israel and the murder of Jewish people. Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. Hamas uses Palestinian civilians... Yes, it does, Joe! Innocent Palestinian families are suffering greatly because of them. Meanwhile, 
Putin denies Ukraine has or ever had real statehood. He claims the Soviet Union created Ukraine. And just two weeks ago, he told the world that if the United States and our allies withdraw, and if the United States withdraw, our allies will as well, military support for Ukraine would have, quote, a week left to live, but we're not withdrawing. I know these conflicts can seem far away. And it's natural to ask, why does this matter to America? So let me share with you why making sure Israel and Ukraine succeed is vital for America's national security. You know, history has taught us that when I knew he was going to tie these two things together. Terror, when dictators don't pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos and death and more destruction. They keep going. And the cost and the threats to America and the world keep rising. So if we don't stop Putin's appetite for power and control in Ukraine, he won't limit himself just to Ukraine. <clears throat> He's, Putin's already threatened to remind, quote, remind Poland that their Western land was a gift from Russia. One of his top advisors, a former president of Russia, has called Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania Russia's Baltic provinces. These are all NATO allies. For 75 years, NATO has kept peace in Europe and has been the cornerstone of American security. And if Putin attacks a NATO ally, we will defend every inch of NATO which the treaty requires and calls for. We'll have something that we do not seek. Make it clear, we do not seek. We do not seek to have American troops fighting in Russia or fighting against Russia. Beyond Europe, we know that our allies and maybe most importantly our adversaries and competitors are watching. They're watching our response in Ukraine as well. And if we walk away and let Putin erase Ukraine's independence, would-be aggressors around the world be emboldened to try the same? The risk of conflict and chaos could spread in other parts of the world in the Indo-Pacific, in the Middle East, especially in the Middle East. Iran is, is, is supporting Russia in Ukraine, and is supporting Hamas and other terrorist groups in the region, and will continue to hold them accountable, I might add. The United States and our partners across the region are working to build a better future for the Middle East, one where the Middle East is more stable, better connected to its neighbors, and through innovative projects like the India Middle East Europe Rail Corridor that I announced this year at the summit of the world's biggest economies. More predictable markets, more employment, less rage, less grievances, less war when connected. It benefits the people, it would benefit the people of the Middle East and would benefit us. American leadership is what holds the world together. American alliances will keep us, America, safe. American values are what make us a partner that other nations want to work with. To put all that at risk, if we walk away from Ukraine, we turn our backs on Israel, it's just not worth it. That's why tomorrow I'm going to send to Congress an urgent budget request to fund America's national security needs, to support our critical partners, including Israel and Ukraine. It's a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. Uh. Help us keep American troops they out They can't of vote on way. it, Joe. <laughs> Help us build a world that is safer, more peaceful, more prosperous for our children and grandchildren. In Israel, we must make sure that they have what they need to protect their people today and always. The security package I'm sending to Congress and asking Congress to do is an unprecedented commitment to Israel's security that will sharpen Israel's qualitative military edge, which we've committed to, the qualitative the military edge. We're going to make sure Iron Dome continues to guard the skies over Israel. We're going to make sure other hostile actors in the region know that Israel is stronger than ever and prevent this conflict from spreading. Look, at the same time, President Netanyahu and I discussed again yesterday the critical need for Israel to operate by the laws of war. That means protecting civilians in combat as best as they can. <clears throat> the people of Gaza urgently need food, water, and medicine. Yesterday, in discussions with the leaders of Israel and Egypt, I secured an agreement for the first shipment of humanitarian assistance from the United Nations to Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Hamas does not divert or steal this shipment. <laughs> These shipments <laughs> provide <laughs> for sustained delivery of life Oh, well, that's a nice shipment, Joe. Be ashamed of something happened to it. As I said in Israel, as hard as it is, we cannot give up on peace 
We cannot give up on a two-state solution. Israel and Palestinians equally deserve to live in safety, dignity, and peace. You know, and here at home, we have to be honest with ourselves. In recent years, too much hate has given too much oxygen, fueling racism, the rise of anti-Semitism, Islamic phobia. Gee, I wonder who America. was behind that, Joe. It's also intensified in the wake of recent events that led to the horrific threats and attacks that both shock us and break our hearts. On October 7th, terror attacks have triggered deep scars and terrible memories in the Jewish community. Today, Jewish families worried about being targeted in school, wearing symbols of their face walking down the street, or going out about their daily lives. And I know many of you in the Muslim American community, the Arab American community, the Palestinian American community, and so many others are outraged and hearty, saying to yourselves, here we go again with Islamophobia and distrust we saw after 9-11. Just last week, a mother was brutally stabbed. A little boy here in the United States, a little boy who just turned six years old was murdered in their home outside of Chicago. His name was Wadiha, Wadiha, a proud American, a proud Palestinian American family. We can't stand by and stand silent when this happens. We must, without equivocation, denounce anti-Semitism. We must also, without equivocation, denounce Islamophobia. And to all you hurting, those of you who are hurting, I want you to know I see you. You belong. And I want to say this to you. You're all America. You're all America. This is in a moment, you know, in moments like these, when fear and suspicion, anger and rage run hard, that we have to work harder than ever to hold on to the values that make us who we are. We're a nation of religious freedom, freedom of expression. We all have a right to debate and disagree without fear of being targeted in schools or workplaces or in our communities. <clears throat> I must renounce violence and vitriol. See each other not as enemies, but as, but as fellow Americans. When I was in Israel yesterday, I uh, said that when America experienced the hell of 9-11, we felt enraged as well. While we sought and got justice, we made mistakes. So I caution the government of Israel not to be blinded by rage. And here in America, let us not forget who we are. We reject all forms, all forms of hate, whether against Muslim, Jews, or anyone. That's what great nations do. And we are a great nation. On Ukraine, I'm asking Congress to make sure we can continue to send Ukraine the weapons they need to defend themselves and their country without interruption so Ukraine can stop Putin's brutality in Ukraine. They are succeeding. When Putin invaded Ukraine, he thought he would take Kyiv and all of Ukraine in a matter of days. Well, over a year later, Putin has failed, and he continues to fail. Kyiv still stands because of the bravery of the Ukrainian people. Ukraine has regained more than 50% of the territory Russian troops once occupied, backed by U.S.-led coalition of more than 50 countries around the world, all doing its part to support Kyiv. What would happen if we walked away? We are the essential nation. Meanwhile, Putin has turned to Iran and North Korea to buy attack drones and ammunition to terrorize Ukrainian cities and people. From the outset, I've said, I will not send American troops to fight in Ukraine. All Ukraine is asking for is help, for the weapons, munitions, the capacity, the capability to push invading Russian forces off their land, and the air defense system to shoot down Russian missiles before they destroy Ukrainian cities. Let me be clear about something. We send Ukrainian equipment sitting in our stockpiles. And when we use the money allocated by Congress, we use it to replenish our own stores, our own stockpiles with new equipment, equipment that, def that defends America and is made in America. Patriot missiles for air defense batteries made in Arizona, artillery shells manufactured in 12 states across the country in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Texas, and so much more. You know, just as in World War II, Today, patriotic American workers are building the arsenal of democracy and serving the cause of freedom. Let me close with this. 
Earlier this year, I boarded Air Force One for a secret flight to Poland. There I boarded a train with blacked out windows for a 10 hour ride each way to Kyiv to stand with the people of Ukraine ahead of the one year anniversary of their brave fight against Putin. And I'm told I was the first American to enter a war zone not controlled by the United States military since President Lincoln. With me was just a small group of security personnel and a few advisors. But when I exited that train and met Zelensky, President oh, Zelensky. Oh, here we go. It's all about know. him. I was bringing with me the idea of America, the promise of America, to the people who are today fighting for the same things we fought for 250 years ago, freedom, independence, self-determination. And as I walked through Kiev with President Zelensky, with air raid sirens sounding in the distance, I felt something I've always believed more strongly than ever before. America is a beacon to the world, still, still. Whereas my friend Madeleine Albright said, the indispensable nation. Tonight, there are innocent people all over the world who hope because of us, who believe in a better life because of us, who are desperate not to be forgotten by us and are waiting for us. But time is of the essence. I know we have our divisions at home. <clears throat> we have to get past them. We can't let petty, partisan, angry politics get in the way of our responsibilities as a great nation. We cannot and will not let terrorists like Hamas and tyrants like Putin win. I refuse to let that happen. In moments like these, we have to remind, we have to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. The United States of America. And there is nothing, nothing beyond our capacity if we do it together. My fellow Americans, thank you for your time. May God bless you all. May God protect our troops. President Biden, a Did he mention Iran in more than passing? If he did, I didn't hear it. Anyway, a um, couple of quick hits, then we got to wrap because it's just got another show coming up after us. But a couple other little quick things I wanted to get to because um, for some reason, I, I know. I, I didn't do the conversion in my head. It's my fault. For some reason, I was thinking that was coming up next. Um... So, I didn't get to this yesterday, so I definitely want to get to this now. Uh, let me get it queued up. I'm announcing that Syngenta, a Chinese state-owned agrochemical company, must give up its land holdings in Arkansas. Syngenta owns 160 acres in northeast Arkansas, which it uses primarily for seed research. The company that owns Syngenta, Kim China, is also on the Department of Defense's list of Chinese military companies posing a clear threat to our state. Seeds are technology. Chinese state-owned corporations filter that technology back to their homeland, stealing American research and telling our enemies how to target American farms. That is a clear threat to our national security and to our great farmers, especially since the Chinese government enacted a law in 2017 requiring Chinese citizens abroad to collaborate with their country's security officials on intelligence work with no questions asked. This isn't about where you're from. We welcome Chinese Americans, Russian Americans, and anyone else who's given up foreign oppression for American freedom. This is about where your loyalties lie. We simply cannot trust those who pledge allegiance to a hostile foreign power. That's why I signed Act 525, sponsored by Representative McKenzie and Senator Boyd, to ban Chinese and Russian-made drones. And it's why I signed Act 758, sponsored by Representative McAlinden and Senator Stubblefield, banning public contracts with the CCP. We will make sure that every company operating in Arkansas is a friend to Arkansas and good to hardworking Arkansans. Secretary Ward has already notified Syngenta about this decision. If they refuse to sell, our attorney general can move forward with legal proceedings and force them to get out of our state. Arkansas will always protect our farmers and our national security interest. That, ladies and gentlemen, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders from Arkansas basically laying the smack down on China and being like, yeah, no, you got to give that land back. 
I didn't get to get to that yesterday, so we're going to give it a quick hit today because I've got a couple more things I want to get to real quick before we got to wrap. Um, so this happened uh, during one of the protests from... When was this? Uh, yeah, this is from yesterday. So there were protests all over the place yesterday, in case you didn't know. Um, this was actually captured by Andy No. Uh, give this a listen. <laughs> Don't talk to me! I'm military! Get that flag down! Don't touch me! You see this? Take that flag down! You can talk, you can march, or get it down! They kill Americans! You think why they do the bomb? No! You fucking terrorist! Get the fuck out of here! Don't apologize for me! I paid him! Hey, look! Don't apologize! Don't! I'm the motherfucker! You see what the fuck he's doing? So that is, and he's he's not named by the way. This was a black man passing by the leftist protest, uh, or the leftist pro-Palestinian protest in Washington D.C. Um, he basically he lost his shit, and he has every right to. Um, he was yelling at them for expressing support for a terrorist movement that killed 30 Americans. Basically, yelled at them to put their flags down, that they should be ashamed of themselves for supporting a group that killed Americans. And him being from the military, he took really great offense to that, and I don't blame him. So, in case you're wondering, this last segment is, this is what it looks like to be a badass in America. Um, we got one last one. Uh, this is from Facebook, but it was awesome, so hang on. <laughs> looks like it's not going to let me play it from here. Go figure. Let me see if I can get to it from Facebook. Maybe if I try to open it as a separate link. Hang on a second. It's being dumb. Because, you know, we can't. This is why we can't have nice things. Yep, yeah, no, it's not going to play. Anyway, so I can describe this last one, and then we got to go. Um, so the video, or the, well, the video for me, audio for you that I was about to play, was from a lady in Texas who basically walked up and jacked a microphone from a pro-Palestinian gathering and basically started calling down fire from heaven, praising God and denouncing Islam, dropped the mic and walked the fuck away. I'm just saying, if anything... That while we're watching all of the squishy, milk toast people on the left, you know, kowtowing to these people, more and more people that are on our side that know what the actual score is seem like they're finally starting to wake up. Will it be enough? Is it too little too late? Only time will tell, but we shall see. All right, we're going to cut things off just a little bit early because um, I'm actually officially out of material as it is. Um, Joe Biden's thing kind of threw me off. I was going to do another quick hit and grab a couple things while we were on the break. And then I was like, oh, wait, he's actually starting. So we'll do that instead. And then, you know, he was on the air for less than 20 minutes because, you know, it's past his bedtime. Anyway, so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this has been The Whatever Show. I'm Rick Robinson for both myself and Stacy. I hope you guys have enjoyed the program this evening. We'll be back next week at full staff, hopefully, unless she extends her vacation again. Um, and then I'll be back at uh, 10 o'clock with the Jen and Rick show. So you get to put up with me a little bit more a little bit later. Uh, stay tuned for the culture shift coming up next right here live on KLRNradio.com. Bye, everybody. Yeah,